Hello, may I have your attention, please? Could I have your attention, please? We're about ready to begin. There's a rumor floating out there. This is gonna take an hour and a half, and I hope not. Um, I'd like to thank you all for being here, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Stanislaus County Superior Court. And I'd like you all to have you all please stand for the presentation of colors for the Stanislaus County Sheriff's Department Honor Guard. Like the Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Could you please start, ladies and gentlemen? Ready, I pledge. Step. Oh, I'm sorry. Present. Oh. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America. America. To the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Gentlemen, you may be seated. Thank you very much. Thank you to the honor guard. And ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Superior Court, I welcome you to this glorious day, a day that is a very long time coming. Welcome to our field of dreams out there. I never thought a bare patch of dirt would look so good in my entire life. And I am not Judge Robert Westbrook. Unfortunately, he is ill today and unable to attend. My name is Ricardo Cordova, and I've been a member of the new Courthouse Committee since 2010. We are now 12 years into a five-year plan. Watching things happen on this block is well worth the wait. As you know, our current courthouse, the new court part of the courthouse was built in 1960, and I think the older part is from the 1920s. So we are looking forward to 27 new courtrooms in a building of approximately 300,000 square feet. This building will probably be the biggest public works project in the history of San Los County. This project would not have been possible without the collaboration from the Judicial Council, the Department of Finance, the legislative branch and local governments, and of course, the hard work of our Superior Court staff that have been with us through this entire time. And we do have a number of dignitaries that we'd like to introduce at this time, but several of them um, will be bringing up proclamations, so I will call them as we go. First, we have Mayor Suze Wallen. Mayor Wallen, if you could either raise your hand or stand. And Mayor, this is not directed at you, but please hold your applause to the end, because we have a lot of people coming up. From Senator um, Andreas Borges' office, we have Jacob Falder and Michelle Finch. Mr. Falder, if you'd like to present a certificate, it's my understanding you have a certificate for us. Could you please come on up? Uh, good morning, everyone. On behalf of Senator Borges and the California State Senate, it is a great privilege uh, and honor to recognize the groundbreaking for Stanislaus County's new courthouse. Thank you to all the incredible supporters of this endeavor that have made this project a possibility. This new courthouse will be a great addition to the city of Modesto. 
and will serve the Superior Court well in its administration of justice. Congratulations and best wishes. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sure we'll have plenty of blank walls in the courthouse since we don't have a budget for artwork uh, to, to display these. And then we have uh, Jennifer Hidalgo from the office of Senator Amina Caballero. Are you here, Jennifer? There she is. Good afternoon. I am honored to be here representing Senator Ana Caballero. She was very honored and excited to be able to support such an amazing project that is years and years in the making. So this is very exciting and we look forward to see, you know, how this field of dreams becomes an amazing courthouse for our community. So congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. And then from the um, Office of Assembly Member Adam Gray, Lisa Montaro. This is an amazing day for Modesto, an amazing day for our court system. It's my distinct pleasure to be here representing Assembly Member Adam Gray and the accomplishments of our courts, the community, and this amazing project all the people putting it together. We're so excited to have this move forward. What a big changing day for Modesto. So thank you for this opportunity. And last but not least, uh, we have Melissa Santos from the office of U.S. Representative Josh Harder. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Melissa Santos. It's an honor to be here on behalf of Congressman Josh Harder to commemorate this momentous occasion. This courthouse is going to be a wonderful addition to our great city of Modesto. And as a Modesto resident, I'm also humbled to be here to present the certificate of congressional, congressional recognition uh, to this new courthouse in Modesto. Congratulations, and we wish ongoing success and uh, justice system. And thank you very much for the certificates and the awards to our elected officials. We do have a number of other um, county and city and elected officials. I'd like to ask them to please stand. Uh, Angelica Ramos, uh, Deputy Executive Officer of the County of Stanislaus. And then from the Board of Supervisors, District 1, Supervisor Buck Condit. Thank you, Supervisor. From District 2, Supervisor Vito Chiesa. Chief uh, Probation Officer Mark Ferreira. Mark. District Attorney Birgit Flatiger. Baljeet Otwal, Director of Department of Social Services, Child Support Services. Mm -hmm. Jeff Dursky, the Sheriff. And Under Sheriff Mickey La Barbera. From the City of Modesto, uh, City Manager Joseph Lopez. Yes. District 1 City Council, Rosa Escutia Bratton. District 5, Jenny Canoyer. District 2, Tony Madrigal. Okay. And we would like to honor and recognize a couple of our, several of our retired employees. Um, Retired Judge Marie Silvera, but she's still working sometimes, so she does come back to help us out. Uh, Judge Loretta Began, our former CEO, Mike Tazi, who was with us when we started this uh, project, um, our former assistant CEO, and the retired CEO of Merced County Superior Court, and a great friend and face we would see on the Facilities Committee from the Judicial Council, it was always glad to see her because she knew all the details about this project and understood what it was that we needed uh, to do and why we needed it. Linda Romero Souls. Linda, there you go. And we have Mike Zalaki, Bill Zalaki from District 
District five, is it? Six. All right, my own district and I don't even know, Bill, sorry. And then our uh, former CEO and current CEO of the Santa Clara County Superior Court, Rebecca Fleming. And then the State Farm Marshal, Conwar Deep Kiley. And we hope, we hope for really good success in getting the Fire Marshal to approve our plans. We don't want any surprises. I, I'll have some stories I can tell you about San Joaquin County and they're about ready to open up and they had some issues uh, with the state fire marshal, but things will be different this time. And from the Judicial Council staff, I'd like to uh, welcome uh, Pella McCormick, the Director of Facilities and Administrative Division. Thank you, Pella. And nothing but it, like a train, right? Um, I guess we'll be hearing that as we are sitting in our courtrooms. Well, I see uh, Manny Graywall from the Board of Supervisors. Thank you for being here. In which district is that district? District four. Okay, thank you. And then we have uh, John Wardlaw from the Judicial Council Chief Administrative Officer. And what would we be without our architects, Skidmore, Orens, and Merrill, SOM? We've had, uh, we visited them in San Francisco. They've been here a number of times. We appreciate the beautiful work you have all done. And then our, our McCarthy building is here too. Uh, they have a building right there and there, there's our people over there. Thank you for the good work you're doing for us. And then we have Kitchell, who's our, our project manager back there. Thank you very much. And we can't do any of this without so, so we appreciate everything you're all doing for us. The first person I'd like to have speak today would be uh, Mayor Sue Zwallen. And on your way up, Ms. Uh, Mayor Zwallen, I'd like to uh, just acknowledge the assistance and collaboration the court received from the city, city staff, and former Mayor Garrett Marsh, who arranged for the sale of the individual parcels that make up this block to the city of Modesto, who then sold the property to the state of California, making our dream come true. Mayor Zwallen. <laughs> I, I do want to acknowledge uh, Vice Mayor David Wright being here today, as well as all of our council members. Uh, council members Scudia Brayton, Tony Madrigal, Bill Zalaki, David Wright, Jenny Knoyer. I really appreciate you being here and your support. And thank you all for being here for this momentous occasion. This is certainly one of the most consequential groundbreakings we've seen in Modesto for a very long time. I am so proud to be mayor at this important moment. This new courthouse is greatly needed and has been in the works for more than a decade since the State Judicial Council declared it one of its top priorities in 2010. This new building will allow all court operations to be placed under one roof and by consolidating administrative functions, it will certainly increase efficiencies. New security procedures and facilities will make the courthouse safer for the hundreds of employees and members of the public who use the building every day. Replacing the old courthouse and utilizing this new space will have a hugely positive impact on our downtown and on one of the key corridors, people travel as they move throughout our city. Public safety is really the top priority of our residents and business owners. And the court system, as the administrators of justice, is an integral part of our community's public safety network. I want to express appreciation to former Mayor Garrett Marsh and all the others who have worked so hard for so many years to make this a reality. We love our downtown and this effort and so many others are critical to our city's future. Again, thank you for being here and here's hoping that this courthouse serves its mission and our community for generations to come. Thank you very much.
And thank you, Mayor. I appreciate your kind words. Our next speaker will be John Wardlaw, Chief Administrative Officer of the Digital Council. John. Good afternoon. It is a true pleasure for me to be here today. Um, I joined the branch just over five years ago, and this was one of the first courthouses that I came to visit. Judge Cordova, uh, the presiding judge at the time, said, we need to get this guy down here to really see boots on the ground, what challenges the court system faces. And, uh, you know, that was an enlightening day for me. And I left, quite frankly, committed uh, to whatever discussions we needed to have with whatever leaders to make sure that this day would arrive. This is long overdue. I, I, I fully acknowledge that, and I am grateful to the leaders at the state level, Governor Brown, Governor Newsom, for the funding and support, the legislature for their support, the community for the pressure and the uh, enlightening folks on, on needs. And I'm, I'm truly honored to be standing here today at this groundbreaking. It is, it is so needed. Our, our state uh, chief justice uh, wanted to be here today. Unfortunately, her schedule didn't allow for that, but she asked me to, to read to you for a few minutes um, her, her sentiments. <clears throat> today, you celebrate the start of what will be the most welcome addition to the court and the, your community, construction of the new Modesto Courthouse. You share the same sense of optimism and pride of communities who have been fortunate enough to reach this stage for long planned courthouse projects. I wish my schedule had permitted me to share, to be there with you to celebrate. I join you in spirit, and I know that the members of the Judicial Council and so many others across the Judicial Branch do so as well. This groundbreaking ceremony represents the culmination of years of dedicated effort and collaboration by court, county, and state Judicial Branch leaders to improve access to justice for Stanislaus County residents. For the state judicial branch, support for this project reflects our steadfast commitment to the improvement of court facilities throughout California. Meaningful access to, the, to justice has several dimensions. We must provide physical access to safe, secure, functional, and adequate staffed courtrooms. We must also make it easier in the 21st century for the public to access court services remotely. And we must ensure that access is equal to all of our diverse communities throughout the state. Every construction project requires extraordinary commitments from all parties involved. I know that others at the ceremony today will recognize project team members. I especially thank the members of the bench and the staff of the Superior Court of Stanislaus County for their dedication to seeing every detail of this project through. My congratulations and best wishes, Tani G. Kantil Sakawi, Chief Justice of the State of California and Chair of the Judicial Council of California. My sincere, sincere congratulations to the community. This is a great day and I look forward to seeing a big building here and being back for that day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Wardle. I appreciate you coming down here to visit us today. And our final speaker today will be Judge Jack Jacobson of the Stanislaus County Superior Court Facilities Committee. We were both young men when we started this process uh, 12 years ago. So Judge Jacobson, if you could please join us. I'd like to think I'm still pretty young, but. More older than I am, so I, I understood that I was gonna have up to an hour to speak, but uh, knowing that people don't wanna be here that long, I was able to kind of distill this to about 10 minutes. And, and it was hard for me to do that because I have a drawer full of memos and documents and plans and schedules that I've accumulated over the 12 years that this project has been in effect. And it's been a long time. It's interesting because uh, when this project started, uh, I was actually the facility uh, chair before this.
because we ran out of space uh, at our current courthouse a long time ago. And so we were looking for additional space. And as it turns out, the city towers right here was the place where we put in four civil courts. So at that time, I was a committee of two. I think Linda Souls and myself made up the facility committee at the time. And we walked around looking for space for four courthouses. But it was obvious that we needed a new courthouse. And the original plans, uh, if you could believe this, was to build on the existing site. I don't know how that was going to happen. But fortunately, the Judicial Council had the wisdom to realize that we needed a new site. We needed more space than what the current site affords us. Unfortunately, we started slow out of the gate. Uh, there were a number of other uh, projects along with our project, but because they were changing the plan to put it at a separate site, we were a little later than the other courts. So this was one of many delays that we encountered. Now, when I was recruited by Mike Tazi, our court administrator at the time, he wanted a young and new judge who could be here for the entire project, as Judge Cordova said, five years. Well, we're 12 years into the project and another couple of years or so uh, to, uh, to build. Now, of course, there's some explanation uh, for the delay. And I just want to take a few minutes because a lot of time and effort has gone into getting this project uh, started and completed. Uh, first, uh, as I said, there was a delay out of the gate. Uh, then uh, shortly after that, um, we had a budget crisis in the state of California. They took money from the court construction fund for our projects. This resulted in a series of meetings with the Judicial Council where they were reviewing all the projects, including ours, deciding which projects to delay and which projects to go forward. So it was a tremendous effort from us locally and with the help of our, uh, the architects and everyone to continue forward. We were always able to go forward with the next step. Although each phase took a lot longer than we thought, we were able to convince Judicial Council that our project was necessary. We needed to replace our current outdated and unsafe courthouse. And so uh, shortly after the project started, uh, a project advisory committee was uh, put together, which was required for each project. And this consisted of various uh, organizations, the county, the city, uh, the district attorney's office, public defender, chamber of commerce, and a uh, representative from the local bar association. They were tasked along with us to evaluate several properties that were available uh, to select. And so there was a rating process and we went along and we did that. Things were going fairly well. I think the consensus, consensus was this was the best suitable site given you know, all the other facilities in close proximity. Unfortunately, a group of local citizens came along and they uh, had a disagreement as to where uh, this was to be. And so this required some public hearings and this, as you probably, if you recall, got some press in the Modesto B, but in the long run, Judicial Council determined that this was the most appropriate site. And so it was approved. Unfortunately, it took more than just a year, which was the projected time to select a site. Uh, as uh, Judge Cordova said, uh, the next part was to purchase uh, the property here. And there were a variety of property owners. It just wasn't one tenant. And uh, fortunately, because this is such a vital part of the city's reorganization uh, of downtown or revitalization, uh, they really wanted us to build it on this on the street. And they assisted us greatly in going to the individual property owners, because had the state done this on their own, I'm certain it would have taken even more time to do so. And, and like Judge Cordova, I want to uh, thank the city and then uh, Mayor Garrett Marsh for their support and assistance. They really did save some time in the process. Um, then uh, our local needs changed as time went on. Uh, we got a new judgeship. Uh, we needed to relocate some courtrooms. And so we needed to build out some additional courts. The original plan was we would have five empty courtrooms because we didn't have judges at the time, but we needed to build those courts out because we had a new judge to be appointed and we had some other courts to relocate. Unfortunately, we had to go through the Department of Finance 
And we had to go through that process and that created some additional delay. But we finally got approval and we got some additional funds to accomplish that. Then COVID arrived. And like anything else in life, things slowed down. Uh, after the construction drawing were approved, uh, the, the plans had to be approved by the state fire marshal. Normally at that time before COVID, they told us it normally would take six months to approve the drawings. Unfortunately, with COVID and other delays, it took 18 months. Uh, now, throughout the course of our project, uh, the Judicial Council was requiring us to make budget cuts over, the, over time. We, we didn't have enough money at the time, and so we had to trim. Unfortunately, we finally got to the point where there was no more fat to trim. But fortunately, last year, uh, through the grace of the legislature, they uh, gave us an additional some $50 million in, in funds that were sorely needed to build the spectacular courthouse that we're going to have in a couple of years. And so, um, as you know, we started uh, in December. It's supposed to be completed December of 2024. So let's all keep our fingers crossed. Now, this has been a gigantic roller coaster ride. Our local committee has spent hundreds of hours uh, over the years doing everything possible to keep our project from being put on hold or canceled. Uh, we've always had the support of our local community leaders and our state representatives. We have reached out to them a number of times. They've written us letters. We have gone up to visit them. We really do thank them for their support. Everyone from day one knew we needed a new courthouse. There may have been some disagreement about how that would happen, but this is an essential part of our community. It's been, like I said, a, a monumental effort that has been uh, successful in creating this uh, state-of-the-art and, and uh, convenient uh, courthouse for all people who are going to use it. Uh, but I would like to acknowledge uh, one individual who spent more time and hours on every detail and aspect of the building. She's been indispensable uh, to the court. Brandy Christensen is our facility manager. She knows every nook, cranny, and electrical outlet that will be at the new courthouse. So on behalf of the committee, we do have a little gift we wanna give you. So if you would come up, please. So this is a, a ceremonial groundbreaking shovel, which might be used real soon. Uh, there is an inscription on it. So let me just read it. it says, presented to Brandy Christensen in recognition of outstanding commitment to the Modesto New Courthouse Project. Thank you very much. Brandy. So in conclusion, I'm actually just about done here. On a personal note, uh, I am sad to say that I won't be here to see the entire courthouse uh, project completed, um, and more so not being able to occupy one of the very nice new courtrooms. I will be able to watch, uh, and I encourage anyone to get on our court website, the webcam that we have set up. I've already been looking at it. You can even take individual snapshots, make an album if you want, and I'll be able to watch the complete project uh, from now until finish. So, um, of course, none of us thought it would take uh, 14 years to complete. Uh, and I would really like to be here, but my wife and I would like to retire soon. Uh, but uh, I will be back for sure when uh, the project is completed to be here for the ribbon cutting ceremony. And I will expect Brandy will give me a very good VIP tour. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Judge Jacobson. Uh, as you said, this was, there goes, well, hopefully there's nothing on that that I need to read. Um, this was a um, very long and painful process. Um, finally, we're at the we're beginning the construction, which is a good day for all of us. And uh, Brandy, um, what Judge Jacobson said about you, you know the plans better than anyone, probably better, hopefully not better than the construction people. But um, you have, you know, you probably 
close your eyes and you can see the plans in the middle of the night, right? I can imagine that because you knew uh, we would talk about the types of locks where certain controls were. And quite frankly, it was lost on me. So I appreciate all the work that you have done. And for the rest of you, um, I'd like to ask our judges to please stand up. They're the ones that will be um, in retired, current and retired, will hopefully be sitting in this court uh, in this courthouse. Thank you so much. We, they're, we're all public servants and we appreciate the support we have gotten from the community. And I would like to thank all of you for taking the time out from your day to join us as we see the light at the end of the tunnel. It is really happening. And one of my colleagues, I've been joking for a long time and I just couldn't resist. We, uh, the theme song to Gilligan's Island, the three hour tour line. And one of my colleagues suggested that I play it up here today, but I'm not gonna do that. But I keep thinking about that song and luckily we'll be uh, rescued soon. So again, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna go ahead and uh, thank you for being here and we're gonna excuse you all. It'll be time for the official groundbreaking. And we did this in less than 35 minutes. So those of you that predicted an hour and a half were wrong. And Chief Gillespie, I forgot to, I saw you there. Chief Gillespie from Podesta Police Department is here as well. Again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Appreciate your help. Thank you.